So because I'm a practitioner, I have no slides. <laughs> Thank you for that appreciation. <laughs> and in fact, um, I will have to pose that this is more a crowdsourcing for answers. Yes, thank you. Um, because uh, this is an overriding question that's now sitting in my head. I spent much of my uh, career working on diversity and inclusion, um, having been the managing director for global leadership and diversity for a small investment bank, Gold Goldman Sachs. Um, and, uh, and so I've, I'm wondering at this point, and this is based somewhat on Arlie's work, and any of you have read J.D. Vance's Hillbilly Elegy? Yeah. Um, so my question really is, does the message about the importance of diversity need to change? Does the message about diversity need to be crafted so that it can appeal to those who feel it is now a takeaway and a loss, you know, rather than the value it is perceived as we know of in common wisdom, in academia, in civil society, and much of business? Diversity, as we know, is seen as an extremely valuable for better decision making, better solutions, lauded for creating innovation, productivity, fairness, reflecting of changing de demographics, and helpful for business to increase its profitability and recruit the best talent. So the diversity case. However, as we have seen and heard already, not everyone views diversity as a positive factor in both their own lives and those of the country. The recent election highlighted this divide. And this comes from the Pew Research Report of August 18, 2016, in which they found among Clinton supporters, 72% think increasing diversity makes the U.S. a better place to live compared to only 2% who say it makes the U.S. a worse place to live. About a quarter say greater diversity doesn't make much difference for life in the United States. About as many Trump supporters say greater diversity doesn't make much difference for life in the United States, about 43%, as say it makes the U.S. a better place to live. 16% of Trump supporters say an increasing number of people of many different races, ethnic groups, and nationalities make the U.S. a worse place to live. So that's eight times as many Trump voters see diversity as eroding their lives in this study. For Trump voters, and I'm using Trump voters, if you will, as a surrogate for a particular groups of people, right? Increasing diversity might make Americans more xenophobic. This is Alison Skinner's work, where she states, quote, reminding white people of the increasing size or increasing political power of racial minorities in America, whether, whether it was via the majority minority projection or about President Obama's election led to them to show more implicit racial bias against black people. We have moved, this is from, I interviewed uh, Celinda Lake, Lake Research, some of you may know her. She says, we have moved from diversity to difference to division. People say diversity creates innovation, new experiences, and change. That is the last thing that people who feel left out by the elites or have lost their place in the proper order, Robert, proper order, right? Want to have happen to them. They don't want change. They don't want innovation. They potentially see creativity as a negative because they've seen this as a negative. Diversity and inclusion are the right things to do. We can say that. But it seems clear to me, at least, that the approach of its message about the value needs to be expanded. How can diversity be reimagined, giving the enhanced voices of its detractors in society, in politics, business, and other parts? Jeff Chang, in his book, We are Gonna Be All Right, Notes on Race and Resegregation, suggests that today, when people talk about diversity, the references to race, gender, ethnicity, perhaps sexual orientation, and some religions, rather than economic class. He posits that, quote, Whites who struggle economically notice the slight and think non-whiteness is a valuable commodity. Working class whites feel ignored by elites and in this particular election, look for someone to vocalize their anger and anxiety. White rural religious Americans 
think of themselves as disadvantaged groups whose identity is being threatened or ignored or blamed. Such people are not reacting against the reality of diversity in America, but they are reacting against the omnipresent rhetoric of identity. This comes from Mark Lillis' article, The End of Identity Liberalism. For many of us, there is no question that diversity makes us stronger and adds to the richness of our society based on fairness, justice, level playing fields, reinforces the ability to make the best decisions for all. To me, the question now appears to be how to craft this message so it enforces everyone's life and not seen as that takeaway or as a belief that others have, according to Arlie, jumped the queue and are getting special advantage. Can we, in fact, and this is where I'm crowdsourcing you literally here, can we, in fact, find language that is more encompassing and inclusive where everyone feels that they're being taken into consideration? That's my question today.